Hello everybody. So in this session, I will discuss the coupling scheme and the spin orbit interaction. First, let me discuss the coupling scheme. We know that the atom consists of a nucleus. From the nucleus, the electrons will be orbiting in different orbits. The electrons will be having orbital motion as well as the spin motion. And we know that according to vector atom model, these motions are treated as vectors. That means the orbital motion is treated as vector. Usually it is represented by L. And the spin motion is also treated as a vector and it is represented by the letter S here. So, as we have many number of electrons will be orbiting in different orbits, the atom as a whole can be taken as a vector sum of these vectors. On the other hand, each of these motion will leads to the magnetic moment. That is, the magnetic the electron will be uh, possessing a magnetic moment due to the orbital motion, and also the electron will be possessing magnetic moment due to uh, spin motion also. So, due to the presence of magnetic moment due to orbital motion as well as the spin motion, there will be interaction between the uh, these two magnetic moments. Due to the interaction between these two magnetic moments, there are several combination of the vector sum can be taken in the atom. Okay, So, these uh, uh, combination of uh, magnetic moments in the atoms are known as coupling schemes. Okay, so usually we have two type of coupling schemes. One is LS coupling, the other one is JJ coupling. So first, let me discuss the LS coupling. So this coupling is usually uh, normally occurring coupling. We say here, so that is the coupling is one which occurs most frequently in the atoms, and hence this is also known as the normal coupling. And this uh, coupling is known as Russell and Saunders coupling. Okay. So, in this type, uh, in this type, the several spin vectors of the electrons combine to form a resultant uh, spin vector and several orbital vectors of the electron combine to form a resultant L vector. In turn, the resultant of L and S gives a resultant J. So, let us understand this uh, phenomena in this manner. Suppose if you consider we have only one electron in the uh, atom. Okay. So, the magnetic moment due to its orbital motion is L and the magnetic moment of the electron due to spin motion is S. Therefore, the net magnetic moment of the electron of the atom is the vector sum of this L and S giving rise to a total magnetic moment of the atom. So, if you have two electrons, let me consider now two electrons in order to understand this statement. Okay. So, let me consider the L1 as the magnetic moment due to orbital motion of the first electron and L2 is due to the second electron. Similarly, the S1 is the magnetic moment of the electron due to the first electron and S2 is the of the second electron. Then the combination or the coupling is taking place in this LS coupling such as the vector sum of the individual orbital vectors leads to the total angular momentum vector and similarly the vector sum of the individual spin vectors leads to the resultant magnetic moment due to the spin vector. So, on the other hand the vector sum of this resultant L and resultant S leads to the, the net magnetic moment of the atom. So, in this way we can extend this idea to the n number of electrons which are present in the atom. So, the process may be symbolically represented as the vector sum of individual orbital motions and the vector sum of individual uh, spin motions leads to the resultant L and resultant S that is nothing but the uh, total angular momentum of the atom capital J. Okay? Diagrammatically, it can be represented in this way. It is represented in this figure. So, the S1, the resultant of S1 and S2 gives a yes here okay the uh, resultant of l1 and l2 here is l1 and l2 will give rise to a the resultant l here the combination of these two that is l and s vector sum of l and s gives rise to j here so this is all about your ls coupling similarly another type of coupling occurring in the atoms is the jj coupling 
So, under certain circumstances, the interaction between the spin and orbital vectors in each electron may be stronger than the that between either the spin vector or the orbital vectors of the different electrons. That means how to understand the statement here is in the previous explanation we have learned that the all the orbital vectors, the vector sum of all the uh, orbital vectors will lead to the resultant L here. Similarly, all the spin vectors will lead to the uh, resultant S and the combination of these two is going to give J here. Whereas in the case of JJ, so individual vec uh, vector sum has to be considered. That is the interaction among the individual will be stronger than that of this type of combination. Okay. So again, let me explain in the same fashion by taking only one electron in the atom. So the net magnetic moment due to the electron of the atom can be given by the same old equation J is equal to L plus R minus half. Sorry, S yes, because S value is half here. Suppose if you have a two electrons in the atom, then L1 and L2 are the orbital motions and S1 and S2 are the spin motions. Then the interaction in this type of coupling is such a way that the individual uh, electrons has to be considered to give the vector sum of the L1 and L S1 as J1 that is the net magnetic moment of the first electron. So, this equation will give you the net magnetic moment of the second electron as the atom is having two electrons here the resultant magnetic moment of the uh, atom can be given by a vector sum of the first electron and the second electron give rise to a the net magnetic moment of the atom. So, symbolically if the atom is consisting of more number of electrons that can be represented in this fashion that is S1 plus L1 give rise to J1. Similarly, S2 plus L2 give rise to J2. So, the vector sum of these J's is going to give it the net magnetic moment of the atom. So, this is about your JJ coupling and diagram is represented in this figure 2 here. Now, you see S1 and L1 give rise to J1. Okay. And S2 and J2 Oh, sorry, S2 and L2 give rise to J2. The J1 and J2 give rise to the resultant J here. So, this is all about your JJ coupling. Okay. Next, I will discuss about the spin orbit interaction. Okay. So, in the spin orbit interaction will leads to the explanation of fine structure of doubling of the spectral lines. Yeah, again, it is based on the explanation of the uh, interaction between the magnetic moment due to spin motion as well as the orbital motion of the electron. So, here it is stated that in its orbital motion, the electron goes in a closed path around the nucleus of charge E. So, the same thing if we viewed from the point of view of electron, it appears to be as if it is equivalent to the nucleus of charge ZE going around the nuclear uh, electron in a closed path. So, uh, from this uh, the point of view of electron, the magnetic induction is produced because of the nucleus going around in a closed path. So, the interaction between the electron spin and the magnetic moment and this magnetic field leads to the phenomena of spin orbit coupling. Okay, This is all about I wanted to give the explanation about the uh, coupling scheme as well as spin orbit interaction.